as I said, thank you all for coming today. This workshop, um, so this workshop, the focus is on VoiceThread, and this is the 13th of our Lex Advance uh, series of workshops. And you might recall in the Lex course, the focus of the Lex course was building quality courses, and it was designed around the Quality Matters standards. And so in particular, Quality Matters standard 5.2 says learning activities provide opportunities for interactions that support active learning. And standard 6.2, course tools promote learner engagement and active learning. So those are the focus of uh, the standards related to this topic. In addition, the seven principles of good pedagogical practice by Chickering and Ganson, uh, principle number two says develops reciprocity and cooperation among students. And with this one, good learning is collaborative and social. Working with others often increases involvement in learning. And uh, principle number three encourages active learning and with this one, learning is not a spectator sport. Mm -hmm. Students have to talk about what they're learning, write about it related to past experiences and apply it to their daily lives. And so we're going to focus on how these standards um, and voice thread can work together to accomplish those things. There was a study by Weiss McGrath that said that sound plus images is going to equal twice the impact in terms of memory retention. And VoiceThread is a good tool to help you with sound and uh, images and providing an, an engaging environment for students. Um, you all were asked to watch a couple of videos before the mm -hmm. workshop. And so uh, we wanna follow up on that and have this question. After looking at that, or if, if you didn't get a chance to look at it, uh, knowing a little bit about VoiceThread, do you have an assignment or an activity that you feel can benefit from using VoiceThreads? And then, or what is the benefit or challenge you think you're going to have to using VoiceThread for this activity? Anyone? I want to say, um, and I'm from the College of Pharmacy. Where in some of my classes I have 150 students. <laughs> so that might be a challenge yep. for using it. But I, I do have an assignment that I feel that could benefit from using it, but then it's challenging. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks for that. Anyone else want to? I'm still unsure. <laughs> I just say, I mean, you know, I, I need to know what I'm here, just more and more about. It. So, and I watched my videos last <laughs> night, and I did. I'm uh, very late going on some, and um, I just, I'm just really open. I'm not too sure if I can use it. I'll probably figure out something later on that I can't use. But I remember being intrigued by this earlier, mm -hmm. but I was just learning everything at that point. So I just didn't yeah. have room to learn this, but now I can. So we'll see. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Someone else was saying something. No, I was just saying I'm hoping I can. Hopefully. Okay. All right. And so by the end of this workshop, hopefully we provide you with that information <laughs> um, to let you know exactly what you can do with it, and um, maybe provide some ideas. And um, we definitely will explain how the tool works. We've got an online participant. Was anybody who's online wanted to share? <clears throat> nope. All right. Well, we'll press on. So there are a number of ways that you can use VoiceThread that people have found. And the um, title of this workshop is how you can use it for 
lectures and discussions, but there are a number of ways that you can use VoiceThread. And I am now going to stop my sharing and turn it over to Jay, and he's going to show you how he's using VoiceThread. Hi, so um, <clears throat> as I'm pulling this up, I'll, I'll say this. Um, <clears throat> I didn't. I didn't much care for voice thread at first myself. <laughs> I, I used to kind of wonder why we were, why we, why we had it. Because um, there wasn't it just a discussion board with with a few kind of bells and whistles. Um, what I found once I started actually kind of giving it a try is that it's so much better than the discussions um, in many many ways. But mainly in getting the students actually to feel like they're interacting with the class as opposed to what discussions, those text-based discussions ultimately end up feeling like these days, which is I just need to put some words on the screen yeah. to get my points and I never have to look at it again. Yeah. So I wanna show you three ways I'm using a uh, voice thread this semester in my asynchronous class. <clears throat> um, and so I'm just gonna kind of pull these up real quickly. One way I did it, um, I started doing it with my online classes is just as a class introduction. Any of you who have taught fully, fully online or even in the remote classes, again, know how much harder it is to just feel like you actually know everybody in the class, right? Um, <clears throat> often to the point where you don't even know what people look like, right? I found this really weird thing going on now that I started teaching online cl asynchronous classes, which is students will say hello to me on campus. Mm -hmm. right? And I feel like I'm just getting old because I don't know who they are. And then I kind of figure out that, oh, I just don't know what they look like because I've only talked to them by email and stuff like that. Or if they've done something on Zoom, they haven't turned on their, their cameras or something like that. So they just don't know what my students look like. Um, so one thing I do uh, kind of the first week of class, and this is also to teach them how to use VoiceThread, is I have them do an introduction. right? And I just say, here's my, I post a little video of myself introducing myself. And then I say, okay, I want you all to go ahead and do that or you're, I'm sorry, I keep moving. I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself in the exact same way. One minute, keep them pretty short. Um, I'm not gonna play these just out of students' uh, privacy because um, I didn't ask them permission to, to show show these. But again, that's just, that's all they have to do. They have to come in, they have to post one video comment where they introduce themselves to the rest of the class. That's about the only time I actually specifically say I want them to use the camera, right? One nice thing about VoiceThread, if you're not too familiar with it, as you will be soon enough, is that students have, multi you can give students multiple ways to post their comments. They can post through text, they can post through audio, they can post through video, they can even upload a file, right? Um, and you can choose what options they have for those posts. I don't usually make them just turn on a video. I tell them they're welcome to if they want to. Right? But for those introductions, I say, this is the one time I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and use your camera if you do have a camera that you can use, just so we can kind of see you as you're introducing yourselves and you never have to do it again. And they're all, I haven't had any you know, concerns about that. So that's, that's, so that's one way I use it, right? It's just as a class introduction for these classes where we feel like we're not actually interacting uh, with each other. The most common way I use it is what I, for what I call micro lectures now. Um, this idea of where I want to present the students with a certain amount of information. I used to do this just as videos that I would record, right? And Bart's taught us how we, and Bart and Janice have taught us how we should kind of limit these to, you know, under 15 minutes or ideally even under 10 minutes. My issue with those was always that students weren't doing anything. They were maybe watching it. Hopefully they were watching it. And then I used to use a system called Edpuzzle, which is a third party system you can use. It's very popular with, with uh, like high school and even middle school stuff where you can plug in quiz questions like in the middle of the video, which actually is really great. But it's another login that the students have to create. It's another account they have to create. Anytime you have them, anytime I have them do that, there's always students who have trouble with it and stuff like that. So what I started doing is converting my lectures into voice thread. Pause that there. <clears throat> so I'll put together some slides for visuals, like Gina said. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jay. Yeah. We need to do a slide share. Oh, oh shoot. shoot. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, y'all. 
you haven't missed much. <clears throat> okay, so I will put together um, my slides, right? Um, you can upload them in the Brightspace, and then I'll come along, and for each of those slides, I'll record either by video or audio the information I want you to present to the students. And then depending on the activity, I'll figure out, do I want them to post a comment on every slide? Do I want them to answer a question on every slide? Do I want them to answer a question at the end? But I'm accomplishing the same thing, which is I'm presenting them with important information. I'm making sure that they're engaging with that information. Um, and I'm even able to do a little bit of an assessment or check to see if they're having trouble understanding the concept because they can ask questions um, as well. And so I have found that the students appreciate doing this. For the most part, the students have been very positive about um, using <clears throat> um, VoiceThread as opposed to, like I said, they liked the Edpuzzle stuff, but they would often complain about it's just another account I need to create. And, and some students have some don't like to do that or don't like to have to do that and that sort of thing. So this, this kind of keeps it inside of Brightspace. It also makes the grading a little easier because I'm not having to port it over from anything. It's, it's, it's ultimately built into Brightspace. And so I can keep track of their, their work and their grades if I'm doing grades on it right there in Brightspace. And I don't have to kind of copy things over or plug it back in. The other way I've started using it just kind of as a final example um, is to do book discussions, right? So we just finished reading The Handmaid's Tale in my dystopias class, right? And so now, <clears throat> again, I'm breaking it up into discussions and I'm saying, here's some information I want you to think about the way people are controlled in the world of The Handmaid's Tale, right? And I present them with some information to remind them. And then I have them ask questions or post questions or respond to questions as a part of that discussion. We had some really great back and forth going on with some of the students talking about some of those issues as well. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, so um, you can create this for the entire class. Mm -hmm. If you have your, if you divide your class into different book rooms, like I tend mm -hmm. to do, and they might be doing different things, can you set up different ones for, let's say, the four or five different groups? That's a great question. I'm going to answer it quickly by saying yes. And I'm going to let Janice ultimately come through and explain how you can do that. Sure. Um, the real quick answer is that you created in VoiceThread, you create one in VoiceThread, but then I think you can basically like replicate it in different places throughout Brightspace. And so you could have, hey, this group is going to access this version and this group is going to access this version. I think I'll let Janice kind of come back and actually say if that's correct, but that would be my approach to doing it. Right? You create it once, but then you basically make little clones that they would, each group would have access to. All right, and I think I'm gonna go ahead now and stop sharing and hand it back to Janice. Janice, did you hear that question from Catherine? I put it in the chat. Oh, great. Back to you, Janice. Okay, yeah, I'm a little slow. <laughs> okay, yes, I did. And exactly how you described that is um, how you can set up voice threads and then make them available to uh, different groups. Um, so let me share and um, I hopefully will say something that will make that what I just said a little bit clearer. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I believe you all can see my slide and I hope you can still hear me, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So I'm going to start here by talking about what's called the VoiceThread homepage. And so um, we have an integration into our Brightspace system. And when you access the VoiceThread homepage, any VoiceThreads that you've created or that have been shared with you or you subscribe to would show up on your VoiceThread homepage. When you're looking at your VoiceThread homepage, um, over here you have this hamburger <laughs> menu. <laughs> and in the hamburger menu, if you click on it, you have a number of options of things that you can filter down to. 
One is tutorials. And so if you're interested in trying to learn more about a voice thread, you can go there for the tutorials. When you do that, you would see various tutorials on how to do certain things inside of the voice thread. Also in the lower right corner of the screen, you would have help. So this is how you can get more information about using um, VoiceThread. The sidebar is what you'll also see. So you'll have these two arrows here. And if you expand and collapse those, you will see what's called your groups inside of um, VoiceThread, but they're actually your courses. So any course that you uh, access VoiceThread in, the system will automatically create it as a group and you can find those from your homepage. When you want to navigate around inside of a VoiceThread, so as Jay was show, uh, demonstrating, you saw him showing um, some of his VoiceThreads, in the upper right corner is another hamburger menu and that's where you have some menu options. In the uh, title of the voice thread, you get at a glance how many slides are in there. So in this example, there are actually three, and I'm looking at the first one of three. In this uh, upper right corner, we have the closed captioning. This is for to expand to full screen mode, or I can actually close the voice thread. Over here on the left is what's called the conversation channel. And so this is where the comments that are on the voice thread would appear. You also have the play button here. So when you get in, you can play uh, and uh, pause the voice thread. This is the uh, playback speed. So if you wanna speed it up or slow it down, you can do that. This is what's called the commenting fan. And so when you roll your mouse over this, um, there'll be a little plus here. When you roll your mouse, you'll see the commenting fan. And then you see the various ways that you can comment. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. And then this is the uh, postcard view. And so if I click on the postcard view, then I can see the various slides that are in my voice thread. And then these are navigation. So I can navigate backwards and forwards between these slides. Uh, so for commenting, you have five different ways that you can comment, and most of these are pretty self-explanatory. The telephone one is interesting because if you cannot use your microphone on your computer, then you can actually use the telephone option. And what you would do is you would enter a phone number, your phone number, and the system would actually call you back. And you would leave your comment just like leaving a voicemail message and it would put that comment onto the uh, voice thread. You can actually doodle on a voice thread, um, but this is only available if you're recording a comment using a microphone or a webcam. And in this example, you'll see some light highlights here. So as you are making a comment on, um, Using the webcam or the microphone, you can actually write or doodle on the slide for emphasis. When you're looking at the voice thread, you have a comment window that you can click and drag to move it into a new location, or you can use this resizers to resize the window. And so for creating a voice thread, and you saw a little bit of this in Jay's walkthrough video. Um, you can create the voice thread either by clicking on this create button here or uh, here's an add your own. And so uh, when you do that, you're prompted to add media to the voice thread. So you can either drag and drop some files here or you can click on this add media and your options are you can add some media from your computer, their media sources, is it an audio recording, or you're gonna do a webcam photo or video. Um, so any one of those options to get the media onto your um, voice thread. And Jay mentioned 
uploading uh, PowerPoint into his voice thread and each PowerPoint slide will be one slide in the voice thread. And then you can go back and comment on each of the slides if you wanted to. And that would be done <clears throat> in this, uh, using this comment option here. So in this example, there are four different slides in this voice thread. And then if you click on comment, you would see the fan and you could just add your comments. Um, there's also options. And this is where you would set your playback settings. So what, how you want um, your users to experience your voice thread through your playback settings. And notice here for the playback settings, you can indicate which method or commenting method you want to allow. So if you're trying to restrict the students to only submitting their comments certain ways, then you would uncheck or check whichever ones you wanted them to um, be able to comment using. A couple of these options, um, well, most of the options are pretty self-explanatory but um, a few that are, a couple that are not are like this threaded commenting. So if you wanted to enable this threaded commenting, you would check this box. And so the threaded commenting is just that a com you're gonna have the conversation and it would be off of the main conversation. So it would appear here like this in the conversation channel. And um, if you want to, create a new thread, then you would be clicking on an icon that looks like this. So if you want your comments to appear in this manner, you would enable the threaded commenting. Uh, comment moderation is the option that is used, for example, if you want to do an assessment. Um, with comment moderation, that means that any comments that are submitted only you will see them and then you make a decision as to whether or not you want to make those comments visible to others. And so when a comment is hidden, or you have comment moderation enabled, you'll see the comments will be hidden and it'll have this little closed eye. If you want to make it visible to others, then you would click on that and then it would just open it up. So you can choose to make those visible or not. And so comment moderation, like I said, is the way that VoiceThread, you can use VoiceThread to set up uh, some sort of test or assessment so the students don't see each other's comments. The last step here says to share the VoiceThread. However, um, you would not share from this page if you want to put the voice thread in your course. Instead, you're gonna add a link to the voice thread inside of your course, right? So you would just create the voice thread and um, it, is, it would then be in your voice thread homepage. That voice thread, if I wanna add a link to that to my course, then I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to add the link for whichever voice thread activity type I want. And I will explain what the activity types are. And then I'm going to enter whatever specifics I need uh, for that voice thread activity. And so to further explain those two steps, when you're in your Brightspace course, you are in a module, you're gonna go to this existing activities option here, and then you're gonna scroll down to voice thread. When you do that, you'll have a pop-up window that comes up and it'll say you need to choose an activity type. And there are four different activity types. And I'll explain them. Um, this one that says individual voice thread, it simply is going to display a voice thread. So it, it's gonna display a single voice thread. And um, so if you just want, you have a voice thread and you want the students to be able to see it, it's not being graded or anything, then individual voice thread would be the option that you uh, would want to choose. The students wouldn't have to look all over for the voice thread, they just click on the link and then that individual voice thread would um, 
would be what would be open for them. The next option here is the course view. And so remember when I was showing you the VoiceThread homepage, I said when you access a VoiceThread in your course, a group will automatically be created on the VoiceThread home uh, for that course. And so this course view option, if you set up this as your um, activity type, it's going to show all of the voice threads that are associated with that course. This might be uh, useful for you if you want to have quick access to all of your voice threads in your course, but, and you don't want the students to have access, then you can just create that link in your course and hide it from the students. Uh, and then the voice thread homepage uh, functions just like the course view in that you, when you create this link, it's going to take you to the homepage where you would see all of the voice threads that you have access to those that you created, those that were shared with you, um, the voice threads for all of your courses. And likewise, if you don't, if you wanna have quick access to your mm -hmm. voice thread homepage, you can create that link and then just hide that link from the students uh, if they don't need to have access to that. Then I'm gonna double back here and go back to the assignment builder. Now the assignment builder is the activity type that you would use if you are planning to grade the assignments. Let me repeat that. <laughs> if you are planning to grade the assignment, then you want to set it up using the assignment builder. When you select the assignment builder, you're given the option to indicate uh, what type of assignment that you want. And the types of assignments are a create a voice thread assignment because the students need to create a voice thread of their own or the comments on a voice thread assignment. So you want them to, you've created a voice thread and you want them to provide comments on a voice thread that you've created or the watch a voice thread from start to finish. So you have a voice thread and you want them to watch it all the way. And so those are the three types of assignments. And as I said, um, you would use this for all the assignments that you want to grade, because what's gonna happen is a grade item for that assignment is going to automatically be added to your grade book. So a column is going to automatically be created in your grade book with the name of that particular activity, right? I have a question. Yes. Yeah, hi. Okay, so I actually, I think I am using VoiceThread already through the discussion. Okay. <laughs> That's been helpful. I've got them doing this. Um, I've got it so that the other students don't see it until I approve it. So I'm already doing this. But with the grading of it, you know, I just always watch what they do and then I make, make my grades. You're saying I can go ahead and take these. these these voice threads and go ahead and connect it to gradebook. My question is this, when I grade that voice thread, because these were different reports on parts of town, that's what I'm doing. Um, will everybody see that, oh, this student only got a C on, so they won't see the grade. Mm -hmm. Just the students, they, it's the individual students. But they're gonna be able to see, I'm gonna make it fit, um, available for them to see. They're gonna see all the different reports. Yeah, but they can't see the grades. So they can't see the grades, so it won't, it won't, okay. Right, the students can only see the grade that you give to them, their individual grade. They won't see everyone else's. Great question. All right, so this is an example, um, or this screenshot is an example of what the assignment builder, so when you choose the assignment builder option, you're, um, given the choice here of what type of assignment you want to create. And so remember I said you can create an assignment, uh, use the assignment builder to use to create, this, use a create voice thread assignment, which means the students need to create their own voice thread, or you've got one 
that you've created and you just want them to comment on it. So that's the comment mm -hmm. assignment or you want them to watch it. Watch a voice thread. So those are your three options. And so let's just take a quick look at what would happen in the create a voice thread assignment. Mm -hmm. And this one, I would choose create. And then I need to indicate how many comments are required for this assignment. How many slides are they required to do? What commenting types do I want them to be able to do? Um, will the students be able to add slides to any voice thread for the assignment? And then click continue. And then you have the option here for the student gallery, allow students to see each other's submissions for the assignment. Now submissions are different from their grade. The students will only see um, the grade that you give each student will only see their own grade. But if you want them to see what each other submitted in a student gallery, then you can check this box and then click continue. And then just like any other, um, any other thing in, in uh, Brightspace, you set your due dates, start date, due date, your close date, and then your other options. Here under assessment, you have the default will be that it'll set up uh, an assessment as a percentage. However, you can indicate that you want to uh, assign so many points or you just want, want it to be a complete or incomplete. Did they do it or not? So when you're here, just choose whichever the appropriate assessment is. And once you've done that, then you would publish. Question. Yes. Okay. Um, so the allowing other students to see. This particular thing that I'm doing, they don't get to see anybody's until they've done theirs, and then they still can't see, they can't even see theirs really, um, until everyone's submitted, and then I open the gate, so to speak, and say, okay, all the reports are out there. So it sounds like in the beginning I'm saying no, because they don't want them to see other people's stuff. Um, and can I go back and change that? Right. So you can, if you've restricted them with the comment moderation, uh, with not being able to see the, uh, the work of the other students at whatever point you decide that you want them to be able to see each other's work, then you can make those, their comments visible to others. Okay. Yes. So that's your choice. Okay, I have a question as yes. well. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that on my YouTube videos, uh, the average, the viewing is less than the length of the YouTube video. And I was wondering if I could put a link to the YouTube video in VoiceThread so that it would um, determine whether or not they watch the whole video. Could I do a link or do I need to upload that video into VoiceThread? I don't believe that you're going to be able to do a link to your YouTube video. Okay. What you would have to do is set up a watch assignment. And then um, if you add media and it is your YouTube video, that would be added into the VoiceThread. And for the watch one, when they watch it from start to finish, then the system would uh, recognize that they have, you know, completed watching it. And mm -hmm. I want to um, go back and say watching means the video played from the beginning to the end. It doesn't right. say students sat in front of the computer right. or whatever, um, but it will recognize when they have gone from start to finish and then mark that as being um, that they successfully watched it. If I'm making. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Okay. And then, so just real quickly, the difference between the steps in a create a voice thread assignment and a comment on a voice thread assignment, you would just choose comment because you've created the voice thread and you just want the students to comment on it. Right. And so when you do that, your second step would be which voice thread are they going to, uh, that you want them to, to comment on. So the second step was, would be identify which voice thread it is. So if you've already created voice threads, say in your home, um, 
on your home page, for example, then you would select one of those, or you can click over here where it says create a new voice thread. So in this process of setting up the link, you can actually create the new voice thread. Uh, it may be simpler to create the voice thread first, and then when you are creating the link to it, just link to the voice thread that you've already created. Notice here it says selecting an existing voice thread is going to make a copy of it for use inside of that assignment. So it's going to make a copy. Then when you've uh, identified the voice thread that you want to use, you click on continue. Uh, you'll be asked the same kind of questions for the create a voice thread assignment. How many comments are required or uh, how many slides are required, which commenting types. There'll be some more options here. These should sound familiar, the threaded or is it comment moderation, you know. And then your last step, uh, the dates, due dates, and then how are you assessing it, right? Once you've got all of that in, then you would uh, publish. When you publish, um, and you click on the link inside of your course, you would see that the voice thread would show up. Now, this one is uh, showing the voice thread inside of this topic. This one should be familiar to everyone in here because if you went through the Learn Everywhere Azula course, one of the modules was on learner support and you were asked to submit a comment as a reflection on a voice thread. So in looking at this, I can okay. see that this tells, gives me information about the assignment, and then I can see the users over here in the course. So we have the assignment instructions. The assignment type is a commenting assignment. I am using the percentage grading scheme. If I were to click on assignment content, it would open up a window where I can see the voice thread and the comments. Also, if I, these, uh, in this example here, it says that these are actually in progress, but if someone had was finished with their commenting, I would see that information here. I can click on their, uh, what they've submitted and then actually see that. And I have two tabs here, which tells me that I have four that are ungraded and that there are eight submissions that have been graded. These three dots here on the right side of this voice thread banner are the um, assignment options. So if I click on that to expand it, notice here I can edit the assignment. This is one thing that took me a minute to grasp is that when you create an assignment using the assignment builder, the, as VoiceThread describes it, the assignment owns the content. So the assignment is going to be the only place where you can edit that particular VoiceThread, only inside of that assignment. It's not going to show up in your home page or in the course view. If you want to edit that assignment, you would go to the three dots, choose Edit Assignment, and then I, I begin to see my very last page where I had to publish, but there's a back button. So if I go back, I can see more of my options on the page that was before it. And if I go back far enough, I should see my voice thread. Remember, this is the postcard view button here. So if I click on the postcard view button, then I would begin to see my slides in here. If I need to add additional media, I can click on this plus to add media. You can add your comments. This looks exactly like what you see when you're navigating around a voice thread. So just um, the point I'm trying to make here is that if the voice, if you've used the assignment builder for the assignment, then the only place you're going to be able to edit that assignment is going to be inside of the, of edit that voice thread is going to be inside of the assignment itself because that's where the voice thread resides. Any questions about that? When you want to grade a voice thread assignment, 
we were just looking at this. This is where you would find um, who has submitted and who has not over here on the right side of the page. And here's an example here of where this student, who we may or may not know, <laughs> submitted some work and um, I'm giving her 100% on this and then you would save the grade. Once you save this grade, it's going to then be um, transferred over to the grade book. And then I can see here that she submitted two different uh, comments. You would also see that over here in the voice thread itself. All right, and we, there was a lot of content we wanted to cover <laughs> and we're running out of time, but I just wanna make sure, do we have any questions right now? Okay. Okay, great. All right. And so some of you may have to peel out early. If you do, that is fine. We're actually recording this and we'll make that available. Um, but if I can get my voice of the chat to drop the um, eval in the, in the chat, uh, I'd appreciate it. All right. And I, as I mentioned about the Learn Everywhere Zula course, we, when we set that course up, we wanted to demonstrate how, um, we wanted to demonstrate a number of the tools that are available in Brightspace. So when we asked you all to do things in that course, we used as many of the tools as we could. And so in the learner support module in that course, is where that voice thread is. And so I would encourage you to go back to the course and to that module and actually revisit that voice thread so that you can see your comment, how we set it up. Um, you can even submit another comment if you want to so that you can see what happens from the student end, how um, they would see these voice threads. So you have that option. I do have some tips for you. Um, my voice thread tip number one is when you're uh, going to use voice thread, I would suggest that you set up a low risk icebreaker activity at first for the students, just to get them introduced to using the voice thread, right? That is not high stakes. So don't start off with high stakes. Um, activity is what I would suggest. My voice thread tip number two <clears throat> is to include assignment instructions or your discussion prompt on a slide in voice thread. This is a screenshot of our learner support um, reflection that we asked to do, you all to do, even though there is a video comment that has closed captions, also on the slide is information so that uh, that would be helpful in knowing what it is we're asking you to do. So uh, it is helpful if you include assignment instructions or the discussion prompt on your voice thread. My voice thread tip number three, um, you get better engagement with the students from video and voice comments. So, um, you can encourage your students to submit a video or a voice comment. You can actually restrict the commenting methods in, remember you can do that in the playback setting. So if you're going to, uh, if they must submit by video or voice, then um, make those commenting methods the ones that are available to them. If you're going to encourage the students to use video or voice, then you should use video or voice yourself. Um, when I listened to Jay's um, walkthrough video, if I recall what he said was that um, he starts off with a video to begin with, and then later on, comments may just be audio only. So use a video or a voice for your comments and then that would encourage the students perhaps to use video or voice for theirs as well. Uh, voice thread tip number five, 
the grade items are automatically created in the grade book, as I said, when you're using the assignment builder. And so um, if you've been to our Brightspace trainings long enough, you'll know that we usually say to um, create the set up your grade book first. Well, if VoiceThread is creating your grade items for you, then that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So you, if you're setting up your grade book first, then what you could do is set up your grade book with everything except those items that uh, would be VoiceThread associated with the, with the VoiceThread. Um, and then when VoiceThread creates the item automatically for you, you can then go to the grade book and then um, make changes to those grade items. So for example, if they need to be placed in a category or you need to make it bonus points or you wanna change it to a short name so that it reduces the width uh, of that column in your grade book, then you can do that. You can though, change the grade item association. So VoiceThread has created a grade item for you automatically in your grade book, and you want to associate it to another column in your grade book. You can do that. What you would do is go to the module where that um, VoiceThread link is. When you click on it, you'll see in this activities details tab, over on the right side, there's going to be an item that says assessment. This is where you would change which grade item it is associated with. Just make sure that if you change the association that the properties for the grade item you are changing it to match the assessment method that you are using for your voice thread. Uh, voice thread tip number seven, you can simplify your workflow by creating a new vo voice thread first and then create the link. You would create the voice thread in your voice thread homepage or your course view, and then select that newly created voice thread when setting up the specifics for the voice thread activity. Your tip number eight, voice threads in a VoiceThread assignment can only be copied from inside of that assignment. So you can make a copy of that VoiceThread. Remember, VoiceThreads created with the assignment builder, the assignment owns the content. And so you would go to that VoiceThread and then you can make a copy of it from inside of there because it's not going, that particular VoiceThread is not going to appear in your VoiceThread homepage or in your course view. Tip number nine, there are some accessibility um, features for VoiceThread. There's VoiceThread Universal. It's sort of a separate app. It is um, for screen reader users, keyboard only, et cetera. And you can and should include closed captions um, with your audio and video comments. Voice thread tip number 10, under the assignment builder, there was one more option that we didn't talk about. It is the reconnect previous assignment. And you can use this if you've accidentally deleted the link to an assignment or you need to rebuild that link uh, to the same assignment. So you can use that reconnect the previous assignment. Tip number 11, there is a voice thread mobile app. Um, and so that is available on iOS and Android uh, devices. This is primarily used by students though. Um, I have some potential pitfalls for you. Pitfall number one, if you edit, remember I said you can edit the voice thread assignment, but if you edit an assignment that's in progress, that may make any existing student work uh, inaccessible. So you're better off not editing an assignment that is already being used, okay? Potential pitfall number two, as we mentioned, <laughs> voice threads that are created with the assignment builder, you will not find those in the course view or on the voice thread homepage. That voice thread and its comments are only available inside of the assignment. You would have to edit that assignment 
to edit the voice thread and your assignment options. Pitfall number three, grading a voice thread on a mobile device is not available at this time. So if you were using, for example, your iPad, you would not be able to uh, grade your voice threads on your mobile devices. And number four, um, when you set up the voice thread and you click publish, then you're not gonna be able to change the activity or the assignment type after it's published. You can change your assignment options but not the activity or the type of assignment. All right, and I think that is for those. I do wanna point out on our cat food blog, we do have some voice thread FAQs. So if you're on the cat food blog page over on the right, you'll see there, um, there's a, a link that says voice thread FAQ. So you can get answers to some frequently asked questions. And with that, I know it was a lot. Um, hopefully you see some value <laughs> in using voice threads in your courses. I would suggest that if you are gonna use voice thread that maybe you start off slow, um, you know, maybe do an assignment or two um, just to get into it. Uh, and the workshop slides, recording, and resources are available on our wiki. Do I have any questions? All right. And your attendance in today's workshop does earn you the VoiceThread badge, and this will be awarded to you inside of the um, Learn Everywhere Zula course. We've got and a question here, Jess. Yes. Okay. So it looks like. The voice threads are under like the constant thread space, mm. right? But they use it for the section. I was checking if I had a video of what I did. Jay, you'll have to repeat the question because um, it didn't come yeah. through. <clears throat> and I, I, I can answer too, but the question is can you, uh, the, you can see the link to VoiceThread on the content section, but can it be linked to through like the discussion? And no, uh, it's it's because it's it's actually an external system that we've got linked in, and so it's always going to be shared with the students through the content section only. That's that's correct. Yes. No, I don't know because again, it's VoiceThread is not even I don't think even owned by Brightspace or D two L. It's it's again it's a separate system that we actually kind of plugged in. Um, so it, I, I find I use both in my classes, discussions and voice thread, but I use them for very different purposes because um, they work very different ways. There's no other questions. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks again, Janice and Jenny. Thanks for coming, everybody.